Sorry. I've been saying I'm going to watch anime for a long time, and I keep finding other things to, to distract myself with, mostly a day job. But I finally got around to, well, I got started on it. And I, I watched all of Avatar Last Airbender, which is not anime, but that was kind of my gateway drug. And then I picked a couple of shows. I, I had recommendations from the audience, and I wanted a couple of different genres because something that I did not know, uh, this is just, just how much of a normie uh, your, your old pal Greg is, is that I didn't realize there were different uh, words for like the different types of anime. I, I kind of thought it was all just anime. And I think you were telling me last time that uh, Shonen, I thought was a company. That's So that's where I'm at, right? I thought <laughs> Shonen was like, no. a, like a studio that produced a type of anime, right? Like, like Studio Ghibli, I thought, okay, well, there's Studio Shonen. So I picked a couple of picked a couple of different ones on Netflix because I wasn't going to sign up for Crunchyroll. I didn't want to go that far out of my way. I picked uh, Demon Slayer because I thought I was going to like that one. It looked like a lot of fun. It looked like a lot of action. I was very excited about that. And then uh, I also, somebody recommended Violet Evergarden. Uh, said it was very sweet. It, it's beautiful. So I was like, all right, cool. These are going to be, these are going to be the two that I'm going to watch. And what's funny is I watched the first two episodes of Violet. And admittedly, I was bored. I, I didn't like it at first. I was like, this is moving super slow. Um, it's gorgeous, but it just, it didn't really resonate with me. And I, uh, I think it was Jeremiah that had recommended it. And he's like, well, the show is like a, it, it's in triplets or something like it's a, it's three episode story arcs. So he's like, you got to watch the third episode. It'll tie it all together. And that's how it kind of gets going. And, uh, so, um, and he changed his name now, but, um, so I watched the third episode and that show is incredible. Uh, I, I know. I knew. I knew that it was good looking, right? I, I, I obviously instantly you're like, wow. Just the art itself is stunning. Some of the vistas that they show. I think there was one episode she had to go write a letter out in the country, and they, you know, some the the guy was like, I want to pay you or whatever, and she says like, this view is payment, and I was like, you're damn right, it is. It's incredible. Uh, so. I love the tone of it. I like the slow tone of it. I came to appreciate it once I realized kind of what was going on. Because again, I'm thinking, I'm coming into it thinking, okay, anime is huge milkers and action, right? And it's like, you know, there's monsters usually, there's tentacles, uh, not in that way. Uh, and so this show starts off, it's really slow. And I just, I didn't have my expectations set right. So I start watching Violet and I mean... I can't I can't tell you I cried, but I came close. Uh, it's the the emotion in that show. And that's what one of the things I love about the show is it gets across this incredible theme that emotion doesn't have to be um, complicated. Right. The, the whole auto memory doll business is we, we take your words and we make them flowery and, and all this. And Violet is like, I don't know how to do that. I'm just going to say what you said. I'm going to cut right to it. And it turns out that her words are more emotionally impactful than all of the flowery words because she just says what the person really means in the simplest terms. Um, and what's what was crazy is that my kids got in on it. And I was watching it in my bedroom one time because I was like, I got to watch this, you know, and there are longer episodes. And I'm like, man, I really got to make sure I, I stay on top of this. So I'm not trying to cram it all in. Uh, and I was watching it. My kid's like, what's this about? And I'm like, oh, it's, you know, this, this girl's trying to learn how to be human. She doesn't really understand like human emotions. There was a lot of confusion as to whether she was a robot or not. I had to explain that several times. Like she's not actually a robot. She just has robot arms. Um, one kid was like, why are they driving old tiny cars? If they have robot arms, there was confusion about that as well. But once we got past all of those questions, my whole entire family is watching this show and we have to pace ourselves because after like two episodes, all my kids, like my uh, 8, 10, 12, 14, 15-year-old, they're all watching this. I think it's good for all ages. And we do like one or two episodes at a time because by the end of the second episode, everybody's like, I got to, um, I have to like, uh, I got to go do stuff. I have to go, I got to go play some video games or something. Like, and we're, we all discussed like, why does this show make me so emotional? I don't fully understand it, but it does. Like, it is so impactful it's fabulous. I think um, I'm not fully done with the first season yet. I think I have, what's there's 13 episodes in that one. I think I've got 10 down. I think there's two movies. Is that right? Is it one season and two movies? Is, am, I, am I correct on that? I'm pretty sure it is two movies. And that is a big 
Okay, so what you said, uh, you thought that it was shonen. No, animation, anime is what they call, you know, cartoons. But everyone knows that when it comes to anime, you know what it's going to be like. But there are genres to it. I'm not sure which one yeah. yours is, but there are more. There's Jose, there's Shoujo, there's Seinen, there's Mecha, Fantasy, Slice of Life, Shonen, which is the big one that sells a lot because it's mostly catered to, like, boys who like action. So, you know, that's why some things are, like, guys with six packs, manly mans who use swords and fire, and you also have girls who have, like, slim, busty attire, but they can also kick ass with... There's also Isekai, which is uh, being, like, reincarnation into a new world. There's Echi, which is probably where a lot of the bad name gets from which is like you know the too sexy there's no plot it's just too much fan service there's romance there's action there's comedic genres adventure mystery horror magic but an anime is not just one singular genre it is a branch it's a tree that's the beauty of it and when it comes to you know anime that's the key selling point people are starved for animated material because here in the west we keep treating it like crap but japan simply revolutionized it disney set up the basics for animation projects but japan figured out a way to revolutionize it they turned it into art and yeah. when you look at a canvas you see nothing but white all you have to do is be the one who paints the vision do you want to be for everyone so do you got to make it for kids or do you want it to be grotesque gothic and dark for adults only and for the mature audience anime is like video games yeah it could be anything you want you could be r you could be teen you could be mature it depends on who's the creator it's not just one genre for one set of people people from different backgrounds different genders different ethnicities they can enjoy it and that's the beauty of it and violet evergarden and demon slayer are a prime example of what you get for a first timer of how it's different demon slayer is shonen it's mostly action intensive and you know clearly meant for boys while well, violet evergarden is something different entirely if you want a good family one i highly recommend spy x family because it is so cute and adorable and funny there's all there's also a lot of good pros to anime too and the best part is the music Oh yes, I tell I you. has the little uh, pink, the pink horned monster thing, right? Oh, you got uh, Mr. Chimera. I'll be buying. I'll be buying that plushie for sure. The yeah, um, right. you know what's interesting? This person said that the you know Evergarden tackles this uh, topic of love, and I, I just reached uh, well a couple episodes ago. We kind of reveal that uh, the major loves Violet not in a like a romantic way. And in the beginning, again, I'm walking into this as a new person and I'm thinking, okay, anime is kind of, it's very sexy. It has this reputation for being very sexy. And when he says, I love you, I'm thinking like it's a romantic kind of thing. And then as the show progresses, it's really more of a fatherly love. It's a very affectionate love. And I was very happy that they went, uh, very happy with the, that they went that direction instead of making it gross. Like, I, I just, I mean, it was, it was, it is just it's beautiful it's beautiful in tone the music is beautiful uh i don't skip the intro song the intro song is gorgeous i don't skip the outro song that's gorgeous like i just want to listen to it it's so relaxing um i like the fact that i didn't think i would like this again i thought i would be drawn much more to the more action shonen style stuff i like the extended shots that's something that i'm finding that i uh enjoy that i never thought i would have liked uh, that we just hold on the back of Violet's dress as it blows in the wind or some flowers that are moving in the wind or something or just a, a scenic vista. And we hold on it for like 10 solid seconds, which in Western uh, movies and stuff where they're like, we're here and we're shifting and we're moving and there's an explosion and then this person's face and that person's face. And it's, I like the, I thought I would find it boring and somehow I, I, I absolutely do not. Um, a lot of people are mentioning uh, like Mecha, like Gundam. I watched Gundam on Toonami a lot when I was a kid. I don't remember what the story was about. I just remember they were kick-ass robots and I fucking loved it. <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, a lot of people are, are causing uh, a call on a Spy X family. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to watch that one. Um, mm -hmm. I, yeah, I'm, I'm so excited and, and I have, I've watched a lot more of, um, I've watched a lot more 
of Violet than I have of Demon Slayer at the moment. I'm only like five or six episodes on that one because anytime I sit down, I'm like, all right, I'm going to watch some anime. I gravitate to Violet because it's gorgeous. It makes me feel things somehow that I didn't know that I could feel. Uh, it's it's amazing. I love, like I said, I love everything about it. Like, I really can't think of anything. I, I can. I have critiques about Demon Slayer. I have no critiques about Violet Evergarden. I just only am upset that there is not eight seasons of it, right? Like there's not enough of it. That's my, there's my critique right there that they just need to make more of it. Uh, I really, I'm really, really excited to see how it ends. I, I like the, uh, the new, um, the new layer of it that like she's learning emotions and is now faced not just with the gushy gushy emotions, but also the negative emotions that, you know, uh, this realization that like she's bringing people together, but oh my God, I killed a lot of people and they're never going to have these emotions that I'm now giving people. Um, the, um, what I said, oh, you know what I said? I didn't cry. That's a lie. I lied about that too. Cause when she helped the author finish his book after his daughter had died and like, she jumps across the lake and he sees her and she's like floating, like and he's seen his daughter and everything. Like I, whew, whew, that was one, that was one where everybody in the family was like, all right, we got to go find something else to do. We got to go. I mean, we just need to do something because we can't, can't take anymore. Can't take any more of that. It was excellent. Um, but unfortunately, uh, the, the other one that I'm watching is, is Demon Slayer. And I, 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 uh, it's getting better. And one thing that I think I'm, I'm, again, I think anime is just like a different, there, there are things that I'm, I keep seeing people say in comments, especially when I was talking about One Piece. Uh, I had mentioned in one piece that like there seems to be this whole other magic system and we don't know shit about it. And a lot of people were like, yes, there is. There's this whole other haka hockey, something like that. And they're like, it's a whole other magic system. And you don't even know about it until like they don't even really directly mention that it exists. They don't actually like you get hints about it, but nobody even affirms that there is a second magic system until like episode 600 or something. And the impression that I'm getting is that anime is uh that's normal right like like there are just there are normal anime things and not giving you everything up front uh longer run times stretching things out what i think in the west we call filler uh kind of derogatorily that is normal and i think that anime watchers are very used to that and so again i'm watching demon slayer and i'm like this is going nowhere and i think that that's just a very normal that's just a very normal thing. Um, I like the, I like the balance of action and comedy in Demon Slayer. I like the fact that they take a minute every now and then to do little funny bits. I like that. I like obviously, you know, we're killing demons. He's on a mission. Like all of that is super cool. Um, the, the only thing about Demon Slayer that is absolutely driving me fucking crazy is this man's internal monologue about things that i am watching happen and i i think that's going to drive me insane before it's over i like the journey that he's on like i said we're on like episode six at this point so he's just gotten back from the final test he's going to go on his first actual mission so i'm very very early into it so i'm just getting the building the building blocks of what we're going to do uh but what is absolutely driving me insane is like first episode his sister attacks him she's turning into a demon and she's got him pinned down and we see her like bulging. She's getting stronger and it cuts to him. And he's like, ah, 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 she's turning into a demon and she's getting larger and stronger. And she's pinning me down. And if I can't get up, I'm not going to be able to wrestle her off me. I'm like, fucking, I see that. I fucking see that happening. I don't need you to narrate that for me. And it's really starting to irritate me. Like, I'm afraid he's going to fall in a river and he's going to be sinking in the river and he's going to be like, ah, I need air to breathe and I have to reach the surface. Otherwise, I'm going to drown because if I can't get air into my lungs, I will not stay alive. Like, I fucking know. I see that you're underwater and I see that you're struggling to get to the surface. I know how that's worked. Like, when a character thinks something that you can't see, that makes sense. Like, when, oh, fuck, I can't remember his teacher's name with the Tengu mask. Uh, the names are very unfamiliar to me, so I'm having a hard time remembering them. But, like, he looks at him and he's like, man, I'm really proud of this kid. Or like th that kind of internal monologue makes sense. But the narration of what is happening on screen in somebody's brain is it's pissing me off. It's it's making me very, very angry. And I think I'm more pissed because I just watched Madame Webb last week. And 
they damn near did that. They were explaining what was happening right on screen or, or it was the exposition was absolutely horrible. Uh, so that is, that is the only, you know, I, like I said, it's my only real critique of Demon Slayer. I am enjoying it. I think it's a lot of fun. I think the premise is cool. Obviously, like I'm a guy. So hell yeah, he's got a sword. He's going to chop up demons. He's going to save people like, fuck yeah, I'm all about this. Like, this is gonna be great. The, <laughs> the, the internal monologue is going to make me crazy though. And uh, that's, that's my only downside of that one. So thus far, I feel like I got really good recommendations. I think both of these were great. And my, I think my only thing is that I just, um, I'm used to, like I said, I'm used to Western writing where we kind of jump in. There's a hook in Western writing very quickly. Right. And I think Eastern writing, they don't do that. Uh, and, and, and it's just normal. Like, and that's just something that I need to get used to. If I'm going to be watching Eastern stuff, I just have to understand that it's going to take two, three, maybe four five episodes to really understand what's going on. And you just have to give it that chance, which is fine. Uh, and, and so once I kind of got past that, I'm really starting to enjoy it now that we're we're getting the uh, the premise of the show.